press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. Namaste viewers. Welcome to Jaipur Dialogue USA, Sunday, 10.30 a.m. And welcome to viewers from India who are joining us today. As an opening statement, I would request all of you to like, subscribe, and share the channel. We are new in the business, having started only a few months ago, and we are trying to build the factual story building of India and these two issues that concerns us, you, and everybody else around us. So today we are going to talk about a very interesting issue called journalism. There was a time when we used to read the news in newspapers, but in this digital era, the news travels faster than lightning. And uh, you know, everybody in the, with the help of social media is a journalist, is an, is an editor, is a commentator, is a mood maker, and a story maker. It throws up a very difficult challenge for everybody. To discuss this matter and issues related there, to have great privilege in welcoming Mr. Pramod Singhji. He is in Delhi right Namaste. now. Namaste. Namaste, sir. Welcome to the show. Uh, this, you are here for the first time, and I would like to uh, invite you for more shows because one one hour show doesn't solve the problem. It initiates the dialogue. So you have been in journalism for a very long time. And, uh, almost three decades. Almost three decades. And you are also have started a new service in the news domain. So tell us something about it, and then we will dive into the element of what we known as the demand and supply. Uh, I bring from economics. What is demand and how, or what are you supplying? So let's talk about that. Uh, namaste, Vibhuti ji, and uh, thank you for having me in your show. Uh, we did as research because uh, we noticed uh, the people have stopped reading newspapers, especially during COVID-1 and COVID first wave and second wave. Newspaper hawkers were not allowed inside societies and people were working from their homes. Newspapers were having lesser paces. And uh, over a period of time, people st uh, started disliking newspapers. So we commissioned a study and, uh, and it was uh, on the expected lines because people, especially youngsters, service people, middle-aged people, they were consuming data. They were reading newspapers on their mobile phones. They were watching videos. They were, were, were part, taking part in shows, uh, the uh, spaces of Twitter, and then the clubhouse. That's a new phenomena. Uh, now the youngsters are hooked to that. So um, I, Rohan Dua, he's another senior journalist. He was with Times of India. Then Arthi Tekur. Uh, she was also with Times of India and uh, was working with IANS, a news agency. We sat together and we decided that we should uh, start a digital platform with live debating facility where news and views are expressed freely, without fear, without favor, without malice and uh, any ulterior motives. We are creating news as it comes to us. Because uh, we'll be talking about media ethics. Media ethics is when you present the news as it is, without coloring it with your own opinion, or twisting it to suit your marketing skills, or uh, turning it um, into a saleable uh, commodity. Uh, I think um, uh, that sells to and, uh, people and uh, earn a lot of money. But if we talk of media, I mean, uh, 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 we, we are the um, uh, mirrors of society. Media uh, people reflect what uh, what society uh, accepts and what is happening in society. So we uh, started the New Indian and uh, your viewers of your channel can log in newindian.in and uh, can read the newspaper, our, our stories. We have uh, videos also. We have discussions also. And all suggestions are welcome. It's an honest uh, attempt to present news without any bias. That's why we named it The New Indian.
I can't hear you. Your voice is not coming. I apologize. I muted myself. So, uh, so what, what I was saying is that uh, congratulations for your new venture. And uh, the fact that you mentioned that you will present the news as is without opinion and f uh, opinions uh, coloring the point of view. But what is important is there are facts and there are opinions. And as the saying goes, even facts can be opinionated, right? A classic example is glass half full or the glass half empty, right? It exactly, exactly. What you are looking at. The, the, the issue here is very important. And you, you are talking about even in television industry, there used to be people used to watch the news. And then came the advent of 24 hour TV channels. And then you began to see the views expressed there. So you are a journalist. People are also wanting to hear what's your view on this issue. So when you express, when you report a fact, how does the view affect? How can any journalist, you know, keep a distance between the fact and his own point of view? That is one of the things which I always feel is what we observe. And I jumped into journalism by mistake television journalism by mistake, because when I came to this country, my job was to promote India, US business and market India here. So, you know, so the, while you tell the truth, there is always an opinion. There is always a personal uh, experience that gets into narrating the story. So, so share with us about how do you succeed in delinking personal biases into news reporting is one of the biggest challenge journalists face because that's where the rubber meets the road. Uh, sir, the bias comes when journalists... Oh, please, 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 don't say sir. Ah, 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 ah. The bias creeps in when the journalist becomes too subjective when he or she associates herself with a story or starts thinking according to his or her ideology. As far as I'm concerned, my political views are different. I may not like a particular political party or its leader or its manifesto and the many things it does. But as a, but as a journalist, it is my job to report what the leader of the party has to say. And the government being run by that particular party um, is doing. To me, when I, am, uh, when I enter the office, I am a neutral person. Till I remain in my office, when I come to my home, have my dinner and log on to Twitter and other issues, then I am the individual. And then I, I tell people, do not uh, call me by the name of my profession. I am here as an individual and I will speak in my in my individual capacity. And uh, you, you talked about 24 hour new channels. In fact, the surfeit of new channels in our country at least. Um, I think there are more than 200 new channels in Hindi itself. Forget about English and uh, vernacular languages. We have got... Um, uh, and languages uh, that scheduled languages in our constitution. If you see the Indian currency, you'll see the rupees written in uh, different languages. So, but they have their own audience. The issue is when you start a news as uh, in the wee hours of the morning, by the time uh, the uh, by the evening, it becomes stale. And if the news is interesting. Then the producer, the input editor, the output editor, the people involved in the field and the desk, they put their head together to spin something so that the interest of the viewers remains towards their channel. And in this mad rush of presenting news, credibility has taken the biggest hit. Many a times, false stories are run based on rumors and since there's a trp race the editors do not verify many a times i faced but i was the um, um, editor of an english newspaper 
and uh, many a times our correspondents in remote areas used to call and sounding very excited and to wait let it be confirmed first it should be cross verified before it is put in the platform uh, i'm i'm uh, there's a joke about hindu newspaper it's in journalist media i'll just quote it to put uh, things into perspective Uh, the joke is that the bureau office of a hindu newspaper the delhi of a caught fire and the bureau chief called up their office at chennai to inform that uh, our office has caught fire the edit then the editor replied wait let the delhi fire service confirm it <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's a joke but it also tells you about the finer aspects of journalism why shouldn't a journalist verify and cross verify a piece of information because anything that that is aired or put into print has its impact and it creates certain audience in the society that too when people are having access to media these uh, smartphones we, we call it um, um, live bombs because uh, you have got a video for video camera you have you can record anywhere and the citizen journalists the surfeit of the uh, advent of citizen journalists has also put a lot of pressure on media and and when the and the media ethics that we will uh, and the dilemma that we will discuss in the later part of this program is the casualty because the mad rush forces you to call out something additional extra whether it is false or it's momentary to titillate the audience but it has script and it is it is like you gave the hindu newspapers uh, of bureau office in delhi reporting that we have offices on fire and they said let the delhi fire department say maybe he could have taken the picture or mm-hmm. the video and sent it to them the before the fire brigade arrived the joke is quite low i think videos were not available <laughs> <laughs> videos were not available there this is important here this is very important mm-hmm. because you brought in elements of verification you know and the truth there is a lot of opinion floated around in under the banner of eminent personalities the recent one which we did a show on it actually on the concept of academic freedom in the us was a brown university professor professor washner wrote an article talking about you know jim crow hindu nationalism and it was a bogus write up it was a hit job done by an eminent as we call it i i despise that word personally but this is what leads to falling of the respect of the institution brown university lost significant respect in the eyes of indians in america because they were peddling a bogus narrative a wrong narrative so the point which i am trying to say is that you are part of a newspaper people are angry with newspapers because they notice they realize that as you rightly said earlier on that people do not like false stories being peddled in that scenario what do you when you think that you know brown university published an article a so called research which was not a research based on this in media covers it people talk about it india is a hindu nationalist thing and that narrative begins to peddle there are a lot of vested interests motivating so as objective as you and i may try to be there is an element of us as an individual based on our upbringing because based on our training that we can't lie and i had said in an article several years ago i went on an assignment in a middle east country that technology will force people towards higher integrity and honesty because you can't hide or lie anymore where do you think the newspapers are you know invited new york times for example invited articles against hindu and india and bjp and promised to pay them 500 dollars for that article and the qualification of its reporters who are anti modi how does how does uh, uh, journalism reestablish itself its credibility you talked about credibility 
in the modern times and that's the biggest challenge uh, uh when i was uh, with the pioneer a lot of kashmiri students used to come to me i was the metro editor then seeking jobs and jammu kashmir is a troubled area in the uh, uh, situation had uh, um, improved a lot after uh, 5 august 5 uh, august 5 to 2019 when uh, the central government decided to do away with article 370 and article 33 35a mm. i made it a point that the boys were given a job youngsters and because i that gave me a window to talk to them sit down and talk to them and also bring them into the mainstream that was the mainstreaming on my part because they were uh, traveling in the city traveling across um, areas and covering different beats and they were coming out with a perspective so unless and until you put the cat out of the bag people may not uh, know whether it's a um, cat or a dog inside the bag and uh, and the, the, the uh, you you uh, when, I, when i was talking about the credibility uh, and um, you talked about the new, new channels there are stories which are outrightly false they are run for an hour and then the suddenly when the uh, reality bites and the editors realize that oh though it's false the story is very quietly taken away but the videos remain in the realms of social media and the agenda peddlers vested interest people inimical to the interest of the country use those videos as weapons to create foment unrest in the society so seeds of disaffection and we i was in a debate um, uh, before by the pre covid days and the inb minister was there i said why i feel that we need a broadcast authority i i i don't feel i i i don't say that media has to be regulated but certain checks and balances has to be made where such type of stories that are outrightly false colored and aired with malicious intent shouldn't be allowed uh, there has to be a cost if someone tries to um, peddle a story that is fake and goes against the national interest um it should they, they they should be dissuaded and um, they should be made answerable also but a lot of uh, furor was raised in our country i know say the article 19 why this and the article 19 but if you read the um, article 19's part 2 uh, that that was uh, um, um, when our constitution was amended during the uh, uh, prime minister sif of uh, pandit jawala lair who was our first prime minister it has placed reasonable restrictions freedom of expression comes with reasonable restrictions that is where the country comes in that's what is important because every you know every uh, right comes with a responsibility you know like we learn it in the united states that though there is a freeway there is a speed limit posted there exactly you might violate that speed limit and drive faster but if your policeman stops you he gives you a ticket you pay the penalty and there has to be a consequence of that for every law that is broken or every trust that is broken there has to be a consequence of that and that brings me to a very important element here uh, you know this is something which is uh, you know people get to know the stories very quickly these days so there was a time when sushant sings murder death suicide i mean god knows how many permutation combination that entire incident went through jo mujhe bahut takleef hui is baat ki ki sach aaj tak kisi ko pata nahi hai aur sach shayad pata chale bhi na halaki ncb and all our investigations are going on and my issue here is with this that democratic rights insist that you are not guilty until proven do the criminals or anti social elements take advantage of the largest of the law to their advantage so you know i remember sushant singh committed suicide goodness sake he hanged himself and as the news begin to began to trickle out there was a total 
chaos. And I think, unfortunately, people have intuitive feeling that what happened, but there is no basis, no, no uh, truth or no evidence. I won't say truth, no evidence to back the fears or the doubts or suspicions. Mm-hmm. And uh, give, me, give me two oh, minutes. I will explain it to you why yes, it happened. Please do. Uh, I've been a, uh, I've been an investigative journalist throughout my life. Uh, right. uh, see, but in journalistic parlance, we say any information that is given to journalists is not an information. Information that is hidden is the real uh, information where the buck stops. In Sushant Singh's case, I think it was very badly handled by Mumbai police. And it did not follow laid down protocols, procedures when an incident of this nature takes place. And Mumbai police is supposed to be one of the finest police forces in our country. Right. And it was, it is once called Scotland, Scotland, India. What they did not do, I was invited um, on many. Um, panel discussions, people were concerned about Sushant Singh because he was a rising star. He was immensely talented. He had cleared all India engineering entrance examination, which is one of the toughest examinations, I think, in the world. Right. Look, cracking AIEE is not that easy. He we had won uh, physics Olympiad, national Olympiad. And uh, he uh, and uh, I th- he was planning to go to um, I think uh, Massachusetts Institute of MIT. And he could have made it because he was talented. And he, then he chose acting. He chose acting and uh, he was rising very fast. If you see his film um, that uh, that was made on basis of Dhoni. And when Dhoni hit that winning six, the 2011 World Cup final, you just play Dhoni's tape and see Sushant Singh playing the same shot. There is no difference at all. Even great Amitabh Bachchan, especially spoke to him, how did you manage to do that? Generate the same emotions. He was he was coming up well. And I still feel as an investigative journalist, it was not a suicide. Because the way his body was lying, and within 30 minutes, the, his photos were all over the place. It was um, in um, circulating. It had the the um, uh, pics of Sushant Singh lying dead uh, uh, on his bed uh, went viral. What police did not do? There is a crime. The mapping of crime scene. When the when a, a, a call is made to the police control room that a person uh, has died. And Indian Evidence Act is very clear. If there are five people, four people in the house, and one person is dead, onus is on the um, people who are alive to tell the to tell the cops and tell the court that what really had happened. What police did? They neither mapped the crime scene. They did not go for the entry and exit points. They did not bother to question people. How did they come to know that person was hanging? Who saw it first? Who broke the lock? Why no um, uh, ambulance was called? Why no medical help was provided? Why no PCR was done? Why, the, why, why the, uh, there was no attempt to revive him? And there, uh, there was a stair that um, opened um, um, inside Sushant's bedroom. Chances are, while his room, um, room was locked from inside, somebody might have uh, entered his, his room um, using the staircase and strangled him and gone back. And then uh, when his body was um, uh, loaded uh, in the ambulance, there was no cop with the body. It was just handed over to the ambulance driver. And he's supposed to have taken many detours before he reached the hospital. And when the, that Cooper Hospital where his autopsy was performed, it was performed during night, which is not permitted under the law. Indian law prohibits perform, performing autopsy during night. It is It can be performed only when there is a written request from the family members and the concerned district magistrate 
sanctions post-mortem during that, then only it will be done. In this case, nobody knows who orders Sushant's post-mortem to be done, that too in, in night. Later, we knew that Sandeep Singh, there was a person, Sandeep Singh, he claimed to be his relative and cops believed him. And they registered an ADR, accidental death report. How do you know that it was an accidental death report without even um, starting the investigation? The very moment the news, it was I think June 4, June 14th, when the news spread the Sushant is no more. Yet they started his committed suicide, his committed suicide, his committed suicide. There was no autopsy report. There was no circumstantial evidence to suggest that he had committed suicide. But the word is spread that he has committed suicide. CBI came a bit late. They they were registered a case of abatement to suicide under uh, Section um, uh, 306 of IPC. And uh, as per my information goes, something will come out in the end of this month. The case is not dead yet. We may soon know the truth, what ha really happened to Sushant Singh. And uh, in Sushant Singh's case, truth was the casualty because different news channels, did, before the different journalists, I say it with authority, with their rank calculated, motivated campaign to sully the image of a person who was not alive to defend himself. That's so very aptly said that to sully the reputation of the man who could not defend himself. And you are an investigative journalist and you have given, I think, in my opinion, I applaud you for being bold enough to say what you said. Because journalists also have tremendous risk because India is also a country uh, ranking very low on the safety and security of journalists because there are more journalists have died. In I faced threats in my life. I met accidents yes. that were deliberate. Yeah. But yeah. God was kind to me that I was saved. That's, I mean, God helps those who deserve help. And I yeah. think you, you deserved it. And congratulations. And I'm very happy that... In destiny wise, you and I were supposed to have this conversation. <laughs> That's why your life was saved. So God Please bless you. God bless you, not only now and forever in future for all your work that you do. Juxtapose this. And I sincerely am delighted to hear that you believe that there will be something coming out by the end of November this month when you say that. I I, I think everybody is looking forward. Yeah, to the, it. the investigation is in a very crucial stage. Why yeah. CBI is not speaking? Uh, the officer who is the SP superintendent of police, Nupur Prasad, I know her since she was a training officer. She is a very tough um, Indian officer of Indian um, police service. And she served as deputy commissioner of police in Delhi's highly volatile Sadara district where the riots took place. Had she been there, we, uh, we thought riots wouldn't have taken place. She was a tough up woman. And there's a reputation about her that if God commits a crime and Nupur Prasad is the investigator, she will put him behind the bars. <laughs> it's so, so, it's, it is so heartening to hear there are uh, people like well, that. So the people should trust Nupur Prasad. She speaks less. Okay. She is um, a very good, and the officers um, uh, who are her supervisory, super, supervisory officers, Gagandeep Gambhir, she is a woman IPS officer. And then Manoj Shashidhar, uh, he is an IPS officer of Gujarat Kadesh from Bihar. So the team is doing its job because if the scene of crime is tampered with, when the crime scene is dressed up, it becomes very tough for the investigators to gather the crucial evidence. And in such cases, if the case is not cracked within 24 hours, it goes on and on. It takes time. Oh, wow. That's good to know. Good to know that cases must be cracked. And compared with that, in the, another part, media. There is crime and there is a media. You know, one of the things which I heard and which I believe in, that the criminals thrive on the compassion of the societies and the rules of law, uh, abusing the rules of law. Think about it. You know, it was ridiculous from my point of view. The way media covered the Aryan Khan uh, uh, drug scenario that happened, you know, as if he was a celebrity. And I, I have said this. Looks like his career, film career has been launched. That uh, I'm a Khan, I'm not a drug addict. I wish he had, uh, uh, you know, that media had not covered it as, you know, emotionally as they did. As if, a, as if the media was 
going out of his bunkers to cover the news as if there was a crime committed by the police people. This is, this is something, again, how the narrative is built. That, uh, the, There's a lot of money minister, involved. There's a lot of money involved. In, yeah, the minister in the, in the Shiv Shena cabinet was openly talking against the NCB investigator as if that man was biased. Which way, that way you create a mistrust in the system and the process. So when a, you... lie, a lie spoken many a times becomes a truth because people start believing that. That's right. If you keep peddling a lie, 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 then people, oh, maybe it's true. That's why it's being said every day, every, every, every day. Right. That's that's what Hitler did. And his, 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 his I, I'll tell right. you what, uh, why RN Khan case was, uh, is it still a lie? And why uh, it was talked and uh, written the way certain sections of media decided. He it was the son of uh, megastar Shah Rukh Khan. Had he been the son of a rag picker, rag picker the story would have died. Because uh, uh, being a celebrity, um, a story sells. Now, uh, Today, uh, we got a call, um, uh, information that there were certain procedural lapses that were committed by uh, Narcotics Control Bureau officers when they raided that uh, Cordelia Cruz, where the party and the Ray party was going on. I said, uh, procedural lapses are part of the department. Procedural lapses are not going to um, impact the case because the, that Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic, uh, Psychotropic Substances Act that came into 1985, it was uh, uh, formulated during the Prime Minister of Rajiv Gandhi in 1985. And mind you, NDPS 85 is one of the toughest law in the world after Chinese law on drugs. If you are caught and a case is against uh, registered against you or any other person, it becomes very tough to wriggle out of it. And the charge sheet has to be filed within 90 days of the CR, that criminal, uh, that case of being registered. And investigation must be finished within 180 days. Charge sheet should be filed within three, three months. Investigation should, be comp investigation should be completed within six months. And the trial begins. Media, uh, people should know that what NCB has accused Aryan Khan, Munmun Dhamicha, Arbaj Merchant, Ismit Sani was the organizer, organizer of the party, or um, there was a um, Satija, there are uh, 10 people. I don't remember um, uh, all names. I will have to go through the records. If NCB connects the dots, puts facts before the consent court, 10 years punishment is minimum, life sentence. So it is not a joke. I told people, I am sympathetic, sympathetic to the boy. I do not want him to undergo, undergo uh, such harsh punishment. But crime is a crime. And when law takes it co its own course, it doesn't differentiate. In the say that you can take the law of the law. लेकिन जब अपनी चाल चलता है तो रोत देता है अच्छे अच्छों को हमने देखा कानून के नीचे एकदम लेटते हुए और यहाँ पे अभी नवाब मलिक साहब का जो है ही हैज गॉट इज ओन एक्स टू ब्रांड विथ बिकॉज़ समीर वानखेरे अरेस्टेड हिज सारे लॉ समीर खान फॉर ड्रग पेडलिंग एंड ही गॉट बेल आफ्टर एट मंथ्स so Nawab Malik is visibly unhappy कि उनकी इमेज खराब हो गई उनके दामाद को पकड़ लिया समीर वान केरे ने और वो समीर खान के खिलाफ केस बहुत तगड़ा है रोज वो बोलते हैं रोज कुछ न कुछ कह रहे हैं और मीडिया उनको सुबह सुबह छापना शुरू हो जाता है because that is a diversionary tactics social media पे बात शुरू हो गई है कि कुछ न हुआ होगा इसके साथ कुछ हुआ होगा अब कल जो है आर्यन खान को जो हाई कोर्ट ने बेल दी है चौदह कंडीशंस है मैं आपको व्हाट्सएप कर दूंगा आप देख लेना it is the the conditions are such he has just managed to get bail. It's virtual house arrest. He cannot move out of his house, cannot talk to anyone, cannot um, uh, go out, cannot talk to anyone, uh, not talk to media. And um, 
will have to compare, uh, present himself before the investigating officer at NCB, NCB's Ballard State Office from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Friday. Yesterday he did not come. So that was violation of bail conditions. 14 conditions, one of the 14 conditions. And judge has very clearly said, Justice Nitin Bhamre of Bombay High Court, if the NCB feels at any point of time that the accused is not cooperating or doing something which, which is contrary to the bail conditions, they should move the um, uh, concerned sessions court for the cancellation of the bail. That's so by not ये दिक्कत करी उन्होंने जो भी उनके वकीलों ने उनको सलाह दी अच्छी नहीं दी अब आर्यन खान इज इट इज इट ये सलाह तो अच्छी दी नहीं नहीं दी पता नहीं मैं तो यही कहूंगा कि शायद वो चैलेंज कर रहे हैं डेयर कर रहे हैं कि डेयर कर रहे हैं गवर्नमेंट को कि चलो आई विल नॉट कम ऑन अ फ्राइडे विजिट सी व्हाट यू कैन डू सो यू नो इट इज वर्चुअली अ चैलेंज टू द सिस्टम ऑफ लॉ एंड ऑर्डर सो यू अब्यूज यू गेट द बेल बेस्ड ऑन कंडीशंस and you abuse that very condition that you are supposed to. This brings out a perfect thing that I was going to ask you about, the respect and responsibility for the society you live in. Everybody needs to have, especially the minorities. We are a minority in America. We respect American law and we recognize our responsibility. That's what is important here. So journalists, who are openly indulging in doing false reporting on matters, do they not fear reprisal of law against them? Why do they do that? Uh, there are vested interests. There's a cabal and uh, I'll call it a gang who is anti Narendra Modi who harbors ill will because many comforts of there have been taken away by the government. Access to government has been totally stopped. Gone are the days when they used to freely roam in the corridors of different ministries and get information, whatever they wished. The Defense Ministry, Finance Ministry and Home Ministry, that is Interior Security Ministry, CBI, NIA, and cabinet secretary are totally out of bound. You cannot, one cannot enter unless and until there is an appointment and an information and message has been passed that Pramod Singh is coming, so kindly let him in. And uh, the information flow has dried to such an extent that when uh, the NDA led by Prime Minister Modi decided to field Ramnath Kobin as the President of India in 2017. Before his name was officially announced, nobody knew who was going to be our next president. In America, um, uh, people know two, three years well in advance who is going to be, whether it will be Mr. Trump or Mr. Biden or somebody, somebody else as well, uh, when in uh, 2024. Hmm. So, and apart from that, and there is a cabal, uh, there are certain um, uh, news sites, I will name them that are being funded by people, there are dubious, there are dubious sources of funding, whose sole aim is to sully the Indian government. It's called a majoritarian government. It's called a right-winger government. And name uh, and they take names. And any crime against minorities, minorities in India uh, means Muslims, Sikhs, Jain, Parsis, and Buddhists. But in today's journalism, minorities only mean Muslims. And then any story, recently there was a, a story of mosque being burnt in Tripura and Tripura went into flames. It's a very important small state on the borders of West Bengal, of Bangladesh. The truth is that there were no mosque was burnt, right. but news is spread. Social media was used. It was done to counter the genocide that is that is still going on in Bangladesh. Wow, how Hindus, Bengali Hindus are being systematically killed and um, stated just uh, standing as a mute spectator. Very few arrests have been made. So this 
to create a, a, in Assam. Uh, I, 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 uh, yesterday I was reading through a, a report prepared by uh, a committee who that was headed by our former chief election commissioner, Mr. H. S. Brahma. That report says that out of 33 districts of Assam, 15 districts of Assam have got Bam, Muslims from Bangladesh who influence the outcome of elections. And the uh, Assam Accord said that was uh, signed between uh, Rahul Rajiv Gandhi and uh, P.K. Mahanta, who was the head of all, uh, all Assam Garsangram uh, Parishad, who became a chief minister at the age of 32. Uh, that uh, they should be weeded out and uh, deported back. The incident in Tripura should be seen in totality. It is not an isolated incident. It is to best match the image of India that it is no more a tolerant country. Jabki India se bada free countries dunia mein nahi hai. You can abuse the Prime Minister day and out. Kisi ko Supreme Court ke Chief Justice ko gali di jaya, aapko kuch nahi hota. Dousare desho mein karke dekhi. Aap Ajay bilkul sahi kahe rahe hain ki India aur America dono hi countries ko mein dekh raha hoon. Jitni ah. freedom of speech and journalistic freedom that exists you can up gali de ke bach sakte hai kuch nahi hota freedom of speech is the but here is an important part and the important part is jaise ki aapne kaha ki sarkar mein aajkal itni restrictions ho gayi hain journalistic access to various places and the need for transparency how do you reconcile that part because See, public also I have, wants transparency i have i have covered ministry of home affairs for many years and uh, as far as national security is concerned, there's no compromise it, on that. I think there should be no compromise no and it compromise. should not be open to anyone. Yes. I, uh, I was um, um, uh, in Brussels a few years back. I, I think it was in, not few years, it was in 2005, a group of journalists. We had gone to European Parliament and European Commission. And we were told that you are free to write any story. But you cannot write any story without taking the official court of the designated spokesperson. Right. Right. In this digital age, our, uh, the, our topic was ethics and dilemma. Sources, om, sources as omnipresent. People write stories, and when uh, they don't get people to talk to, then the reporter becomes the source and coins um, um, a court in a double quote and unquote and writes it. That uh, we have also, I'm, I'm not saying I'm a dude because if I had papers and a story, then an official said that official, the Home Minister, Home Secretary of India, he, uh, it was a long time back, 10, 15 years back. I was in his office, he said, your story is very good, but who is that officer whom you have quoted? That's me. Now, that brings me to the other ethical challenge the journalists face is the privacy and protection of the sources. One of the exactly. best kept secret is the famous Watergate scandal, the deep throat. The deep hmm. throat identity is only speculation. But till date, nobody knows who was deep throat. So you have to maintain the source of privacy. But... You know, I, I wrote a story. Vibhuti, Vibhuti, I wrote a story that was in 2006 um, that when Indian government of, of Dr. Manmohan Singh was uh, in a way uh, ready to hand over the crucial saltoreries to Pakistan. Right. The former job, chief of farming staff, General J.J. Singh, who was then chief of farming staff, uh, uh, later accused uh, to he he made a statement one or two years back that the government was on the verge. I broke that story. It's, it's still available on the net. I will send you the link. Please and do. Uh, when the story appeared in my newspaper, The Pioneer, all hell broke loose. Right. I got a call early in the morning from someone very important in the government that who gave you this information. And he said, okay, uh, this meeting was headed by the Prime Minister and these people attended the meeting and none of them have spoken to you. So I want to know who gave you the story. I'm sorry, I will not name, name the source. If you insist, 
to kindly tell the prime minister that i will tell it to the chief justice of india only that will camera and i am not bound to disclose my my source and i am um, the various judgments of the honorable supreme court of india he, he uh, got it got the point and did not insist but uh, the story was given to me i had the papers when i, I was having the papers i wrote the story and it was true saltoro is, remains with us had we given it to pakistan pakistani army would have been sitting right on us um, indian army what had what had happened in kargil when they had occupied certain heights right. when right. they included in our territory we had to sacrifice so many young officers to regain those heights because when enemies is, um, is staring you at the top and you are in the gr ground before you reach the top you are easy are... target you are easy target you are easy yeah. target. but here is an important point you know congratulations for saving that entire scenario but that brings about a very crucial question the ethics of it and the dilemma that you face what motivated the then prime minister and his government to hand over your enemy state with something which would give them a permanent military advantage at the expense of the country should there be a trial for that should there be an exposure of that what was the motivation uh we were told that uh, george w bush uh, was the factor it was he was it was his second tenure and he was uh, trying to give something to pakistan for pakistan's help in fighting terror and i don't know uh, whether american intelligence was aware or not that pakistanis were uh, having osama bin laden at abbottabad then in 2006 also and uh, if you read uh, samur harsh's uh, version of, of operation osama bin laden then it was a whistle blower from isi who broke the story and when the raymond davis uh, american spy was um, chased in lahore when he killed two persons and then obama ensured that raymond davis was handed over to america i say got a hint oh okay, kim they have got to know about our plan and um, then uh, the kani was summoned to pentagon and uh, right um, act was read we'll bomb you to stonies aur bola gaya tha ki hame pata hai wahan pe hai aur hum operation karne wale hain the same pakistan is still continue um, uh, now uh, the, the democrats and republicans both treated pakistan with kid gloves and when india uh, kept telling them i remember the former secretary defense secretary anand bora uh, we were sharing a stage at lal badu sasi national academy of administration he said ki when we presented facts then um, it, uh, it was bill clinton's regime we were told that you should uh, learn how to administer rather than um, lodging a complaint against pakistan it took bombing of the twin towers for americans to realize that terrorism especially the islamic terrorism was a reality uske pehle tak wo mante nahi the aapne bahut badi baat kahi hai ki you know george bush administration was pressured or manipulated by pakistan hmm. to pressurize india in making certain concessions <laughs> now it's very important here i do know one thing for sure is that every support that pakistan gives to america the quid pro quo they ask is something against india and that's where us goes soft on them i believe if we indian government and indian machinery is no longer complying with that element anymore and therefore as the saying goes establishment is creating problem for mr modi in one way or the other we will not go into that we will not go into that as a matter of today i am i am intervening in between when pulwama attack took place on february um, 14 2018 uh india retaliated by bombing yeah. that facility yes yeah. and uh, 
Do you imagine that Pakistanis, uh, that um, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region uh, where the bombing took place, Imran Khan come, come, comes from that area. Pakistanis who take who have taken so much of loan on China and they are dependent on the Chinese dollars, Chinese money, who are training people of East Turkestan party that is fighting for the independence of the rest of Xinjiang province in China. And China knows it. Indians, our government gave them evidence that these people were, were also killed in the bombing that we did. China realized it, but China is a China is a rogue country because India for for us we will handle the Pakistan at the back of our hand. Now the real and imminent danger, the threat is China. And when Abhinandan fell that F-16. American denied. Pakistani said, no, 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 nothing happened. Uh, we used JF-17 to bomb or uh, to attack Indian targets. Somebody should, um, I was in a TV debate. I said that MRM missiles are manufactured by Raytheon. Oh, that's a company of US. And MRM missiles are tailor-made for F-16. These uh, fighter jets don't run on Jugar technology that you will fix Raytheon to JF-17 and will be able to fire um, uh, into Indian territory. Very true. But Americans said, no, 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 we had checked that all the machines were intact. No F-16 was destroyed by Indians. But where the radar signature and many, the, we uh, we presented them the evidence that we, we did, that evidence that did. Um, um, down F-16. Yeah, yeah, down one F-16. And the precondition that Americans had put before Pakistan that you shall not use it against India. So they, they used it against India because uh, that is the, that is, I think F-16 is the only uh, fighter jet that they have got. Um, that yeah. is of good quality because Chinese jets are filing like uh, dead birds. If you keep reading Chinese paper, they are 17 every, uh, every month, every, every second month. One JF-16 comes down because Chinese technology, we believe, is the uh, stolen technology. The, yesterday, today, I was going through the way that the, they, have, they have used uh, German technology expertise of German engineers for their uh, for preparing engines of their submarines. <laughs> and that brings, you know, we have a, some time remaining, and I wanted to touch upon one very important element, and that comes the business of journalism. G. Uh, business of journalism, which is where the ethics has the maximum clash. Reporting, protecting sources, transparency. These are big challenges that journalists face. And as a banker, I have faced this. Because, you know, you have to draw a line beyond which you cannot go or will not do things. So we are privy to secrets of many different kinds. You are privy to many secrets of other kinds, you know, like which public need not know on a need to know basis. So America may say that. On a need to know basis, you need not know or one need not know. But the business versus profession, because every business needs money and journalism is a business too. You have it, to. It, 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 it requires a lot of money. It requires a lot of money. It requires a lot of money. And, you know, to make a rocket makes requires a lot of money. In a PBS interview, it's on record. You know, there were four previous uh, administration spokespersons of Bush, Clinton, and era. And I had asked this question in, the, in, in that entire debate uh, of uh, whether the United States must pull back its overseas bases. And I had asked them that when you give them an F-16, you spend a billion dollars on an, one F-16 or a battery of aircraft. Why don't you bring about science and technology education to the madrasas of Pakistan? Maybe you will transform that country for a betterment for all its life, instead of giving them F-16s and weapons. So the moderator turned to me and asked me, why don't you enter politics? Because you are making a right statement. It's on record. So um, I have always been in, uh, induced in believing in asking right questions and making inquiries, the truthful inquiries. So my ask is with you is, does the business of journalism is a cause of a compromise that happens in journalistic profession. 
See, uh, I jotted few points for you. Uh, <laughs> whether ethics are situational or absolute. So the, the ethics that you are talking about is situational. Because media houses need money to run their operations. So what happens? Objective, objectivity becomes the first casualty. If I am in Delhi, my newspaper needs money, my TV needs money, then there is Arvind Kejival government that is doling out money, <laughs> huge amount of money. They have got a budget of some more than 600 crores. So that is distributed to uh, newspapers and TV channels that are planned to them. If you are, uh, you just publish a story, your ad will stop. And when advertisement stops, then the metro editor is summoned by the editor and the marketing head comes to your to throat. And why did you write this story? You did not talk to us. Now see the our ads have stopped. Where do we get the money? How, how are we going to disperse the salary? So in order to maintain the objectivity of media, government of India, as far as my concern, any government, state government should have a separate corpus of fund that should be uh, um, put under a scrutiny of the highest court of the land and that the money is used judiciously. And so the objectivity of news media remains. If uh, I'm getting a hell of a lot of money from Haryana government or Chhattisgarh government or Madhya Pradesh government, so the editorial line is clearly drawn. Now there are brand directors in newspapers. I've worked uh, with bigger groups of uh, Times of India also for four years. And Danik uh, Bhaskar is a Hindi journalist, uh, Hindi newspaper. It is the largest public uh, in, uh, um, language daily of India. It's published from 15 states. Its circulation is used more than crore. Um, so uh, when I uh, uh, attended the first meeting, we were given do's and don'ts. Aapko inko nahi touch karna, inko nahi touch karna. So we said, brother, let's go to the house and sing the song. We'll sing the song in the morning and I should quit journalism. When I'm not supposed to write, why, then why should I write against B if I'm, not, if I'm not allowed to write against A? Merely because B is not advertising with us. So this is the biggest, I don't call it dilemma. This is the bitter reality of media. That will always be there. It will be there because uh, till there are mouths and there are greedy people, um, it, it will remain. Because it, it, it has become a, a medium to buy peace. The same challenge goes with the election process as well. When you say that independent funding should be done and you know, provide support so that people remain objective, uh, that same thing goes with election. Politician. That determines, uh, uh, you know, what you say, uh, what your stand is. So, if you have X, you X not say X, you can't say X, you can't say X, you can't say X. It has to be, it is always a quid pro quo for that. Uh, nobody does charity. Life is not charity. It is, it is a hard calculated fact. Now, here comes a very, very important question from my point of view that, Compromise the hona, that's a word. Yeah. Yeah, that's a word. But what the audience wants and what the audience needs, there are two very in, in, intuitive differences here. Public wants to hear pro Modi news or public wants to hear anti Modi news. And when a particular media disses out that kind of a thing, that becomes a big challenge. So, right now in the Western media, for example, it is and Rana of the world. Everything in India is evil, but nobody will talk about the evil that exists in other societies and other communities. If you talk about it, you are branded as suffering from phobia. It, see, uh, I'll give you one example. A clerk Ahmed was killed in Uttar Pradesh when Akhilesh Yadav Samajwadi Party government was there. And it became an international news that how a Muslim was killed for eating beef by Hindu national uh, right-wingers or what. 
but when uh, and then uh, uh, there is a systematic attempt to separate uh, what we call the lower caste people whom a uh, new term has been coined dalits from hindus right so dalits hai aur hindu hai even khetaram bhil a dalit was killed by people all the accused persons were muslims it was a minuscule reference on the 7th 8th page but when the same thing happens in a bjp ruled state it becomes a front page flyer then rana yobs and arfa khanams and every brother pakistan and their um, people who are based abroad they create a big hue of cry this is uh, this is happening in india i mean recently what is happening in the, the so called farmers protest where is the protest and who are these farmers india is a huge country only a pocket for um, um, handful of people cannot uh, represent um, farmers of india i am also a farmer i come from the eastern part of uttar pradesh the um, um, uh, and uttar pradesh had it been a country would have been the fifth largest country as far as population is concerned it has got 24 24 crore people rakesh tikat is not western up he uh, he comes from uh, sisauli village his father was a big uh, former leader we accept that mahendra singh tikat was a big leader but to say uh, and that the, the bjp is killing farmers and uh, i i was yesterday i was uh, there was a tweet by claudia web uh, she is from uh, list of uh, um, um, labor mp uh, of british parliament she keeps writing about she keeps tweeting about india i said bhaiya you my, my, madam since you are not um, uh, an indian mp you should desist away from poking your nose in our into our internal affairs a rule has been passed by the indian government if the parliament has passed it president has um, uh, given uh, his permission and it has become a law so uh, supreme court is already seized with the issue then why are you presenting and why are you say the indian uh, government is but this uh, uh, this gurpatwan singh pannu or modhaliwal and the khalistanis who are third who haven't come to india for last 50 60 years and uh, they are uh, trying to be shared that atmosphere so uh, and uh, there is a section and of media that panders to them to only to score few brownie points and against whom despite i'm as a journalist i say against the prime minister right हमारा काम है सच को दिखाना अगर मोदी गलत कहते हैं तो हम उनके खिलाफ लिखेंगे भाई राइट right. हम उनका आरती नहीं उतारेंगे बट टू अटैक हिम एवरी नाउ एंड देन फॉर डूइंग फॉर डूइंग एवरीथिंग इज राइट ये मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा अभी कोवैक्सीन के बारे में इंडियन जर्नलिस्ट वे द वन हु डिमांड कोवैक्सीन रोट स्टोरीज अबाउट कोवैक्सीन वाज अ फेल्ड वैक्सीन राइट नो इट इज इट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू टॉक अबाउट वी हैव लिमिटेड टाइम and uh, we'll invite you again and i would uh, want you to come again to discuss these issues because one hour is not enough because this as it is we know that we have we have brought about lots of issues next sunday maybe on um, we'll whenever you time on sundays i'm i'm free by, by no, between 8 to we will do that and we will talk more we have to educate people so viewers thank you very much for being there ours is jaipur dialogue usa is a new initiative support us subscribe like and share all of you with your friends and uh, folks alike and yeah. i would urge jaipur dialogue india viewers also to like subscribe our channel here you will need you and will... Uh, as a journalist uh, i would like to uh, add that journalists should treat news as it comes to them without alluding any motive i am not here to take sides we are not here to take sides we are here to educate people and take the information to them unke mobile phone mein information le jana hamara kaam hai jhoot bolna hamara kaam nahi that's right so thank you very much viewers satyameva jayate as i always say and with this see you next sunday again sab log swasthya mein we we pray for the good health of the people thank you this covid should go so that people are free to travel and mingle with each other right. this chinese virus thank you, should... thank you and best wishes thank for your new venture thank you thank you thank you sir thank you for being so kind to me and having me at uh, on your show my pleasure uh, i would love to join again thank you thank you, thank you sir thanks thank you. press the bell icon on youtube and don't miss another update